I mean, it's easy to get carried away building a car and think, I'll add this shiny bit and that shiny bit. Some people mightn't get it why it hasn't got shiny bits, but you know, if you don't get it, you don't get it. Back in I think it was about 2010, um, we were over at the NSRA Nationals in, uh, in Hawke's Bay, calling to see Steve and Linda Montepero on the way home, and just for a cup of coffee and see what their projects were up to. And I knew Stuart Martin had had the car at Steve's, and Steve had been doing a lot of work on it. And Steve sort of said, Oh, well, the car's up, Stuart's car's up for sale. We're coming home, went, he said, You should go and buy that car. Steve was a negotiator for Stuart Martin and he rang me back the following night and said, you own a three window? And I, oh, okay, here we go. History is it's pretty special in the car. Um, I know some of the history's got a little bit diluted now we feel it's still there, we've tried to maintain some of it. But you know, Wendy's very passionate about keeping things old style. There, she's the wheel police and the traditional police, definitely. The plan was to keep all parts older than the owner and try to keep it looking pretty simple. So we really weren't afraid to drive it. All we got was a a body, there's no gas tank, we've got a grill shell and a, fire, a four cylinder firewall and worked from there and it was in basically in 12 months from the day to bring the body home, it was certified and warranted and back on the road. Um, had a good buddy, Shane Pratt, a very clever engineer, he built the chassis for us uh, using Steve Montepito's jig and originally the car had a, a step down floor for the, the three window, but we didn't want that, we wanted a flat floor so we could put like a X member in the middle, a better support, and we didn't have a 32 cross member. I was very fortunate, I didn't have to do too much to the body, just sanded it and um, primed it, stripped it right back because it had been in primer too long, it's gone rusty a little bit, but stripped it right back and just primed and sanded it and then basically sprayed it, lifted it off the gun. Yeah, the motor's got a little bit of history in it too, I guess. We were over in the States in 2008 um, with Jimmy and Kerry Keys. They bought a Mercury coupe from Bobby Walden's. And while we were there, Bobby was working on his wife's Mercury sedan. He was hot riding that and he said, oh, there's a Mercury motor here lying on the floor. Just out of, she was driving it every day. So for $500, he bought him the 50 Mercury motor and box and everything else. Early banjo diff with sliding axles, F100 Bendix brakes. The interior was, that's also got a story. All bits of the car have got a story, I think, really. Um, that we were down south and we were walking along the street in Macargill past the second hand shop, and there was a big long leather seat sitting outside the second hand shop. I said to the man, How much do you want for your, your seat? He said, Oh, $50. So we got two bits of seven foot tuck and roll leather. It came from an old billiard hall down there somewhere. So I've had plenty of practice. It drives nice, yeah. It's like, drives like a hot rod, but yeah, it's really good. It's, fun. it's not as noisy as what you imagine. People see no upholstery and they go, oh, is that noisy? No. No. This moment's fire. In the end, it's, it's here. It's what you want to do. And if other people don't understand it, that's fine. It's just as much fun going down the road. Mm -hmm.